against T1, and it really on paper should be a damn one Kia game. Yeah, if, if you look at last year though, T1, only four wins in total in the 21 uh, games they've played in APAC North. Two were overtime wins, two were normal. Um, so let's see if they can uh, they can pull it off again. I mean, they started off strong Monday, uh, not Monday, Wednesday. Wednesday. Two but the entire ago. sense of really days is completely gone really because normally recent. we would start the week Monday, not not this time. We start yeah, normally Wednesday. we just start. Uh, yeah. Monday. Okay, I thought my morning was a bit hazy, but you. Does it start on Sunday? You're lost. In the Netherlands, we start with Monday. You can start it on a Sunday. It really depends. Okay, so you start what with a break. What was your purpose? What was your point here? I have no clue anymore. Okay. What, what, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, let's just start again. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Apex North. Hey, welcome. We have four bands on our new bands. Now we have three for now. It's about to come through. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Valkyrie. And then. Oh, so well oh. guessed. Oh, I'm so clever. There we go. But yeah, uh, T1 won four games in total. They were on to a good start. On Wednesday, there we go. So yeah. right now, um, but after that, they uh, they seem to struggle a little bit on, on closing out some of these rounds. And after that, the opposition became a little bit stronger. The warm up was completed, and T1 suffered the defeat afterwards. Now they're up against them one Kia team that has uh, found some international success was a one v one away from making a grand final in Sweden. Not the Invitational, but the Major. No. Supported to know, because we had two in a very short time there. We did. So, they, they almost did the best that APEC has ever done. And and they're on this level consistently now. I mean, they were in Mexico as well. They they went to Sweden twice. And, of course, surely they want to they wanna go to yet another Major. Important to note, the big difference in APEC North, though, is that the number one spot no longer it, it guarantees you a Major spot. It's the top four from APEC North and APEC South. They go up against each other in a playoffs format. Thrilling. It's very thrilling. And the top four will be able to get those spots. So even if you do lock in that first place, well, you're going to be playing uh, statistically an easier game against the number four of Apex South, but it's not guaranteed. All right, there's PGH already trying to find his way out of a window. Oh, we talked comes. about his C4 place before in that one. Wow, they actually changed direction. Rin had an idea and a read on where that play was going to be put together. And I guess if we know about it, they sure as heck know about it too. And that's going to be the first bit of a rebuff. One of the performances that we might have our eyes on in terms of players performing, if that's a conversation, was to be fair, the rest of Damon Kira's out of Katsang, who had a huge game the other day. But at the same time, you look at the big players from T1, specifically 11, really couldn't find the connection in the showdown against Talon on Wednesday. So we're kind of eyes on, yeah and potentially 11 to see if they can try and show themselves into this fight a little bit more than they were able to the two days ago. Demakia looking to find themselves an opening here. Looks like they want to get rid of that. Is that, is that a thorn? I was going to say, is that, is that a thorn? Here. Is that a razor bloom? Yes, it was. It was like, we haven't seen that icon being pinged before in pro play. And there it is. But the first one already taken out. And of course, it's a, a bit of an information game. Razor Bloom because there is quite a bit of a delay on it. It doesn't instantly pop, but it forces either the defender or the attackers to fall back or to push completely through. There's a shield and a lot of pressure is now coming down onto Crazy Boy and his staircases here. It is Demon Kia that seems to be wanting to go for a push up those staircases. It's just that it's a shotgun that's waiting around the corner. Is this the first thorn that we've seen in APAC North? I think it is, yeah. No? no. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Stefan just said no. Stay, Probably was the game that we didn't cast. Yeah, it, I mean, it would have been. Otherwise, yeah. we would have noticed it. Uh, there's a lot of rounds that happen here, but they're slowed down, and the grenade actually finds the first. Yes, so it would take care of Mephi, the recent pickup there for T1, who is the first off the board. He had a very good showing on Wednesday and was one of the forces that was actually trying to put some damage down onto Talon. Couldn't quite get the win out, but here, if he can try and find a little bit more momentum, well, that might be something they can build behind. More pressure, more grenades, and more discs are going to be burnt off. There goes the Thorn at the same yeah. time. The Razor Bloom was caught out by the Wormai disc and the explosion that came through. Crazy Boy, he is known for playing quite aggressive positions and leaning himself into the firefight. He's not going to play this too tepid, so they're going to see if they can try and pull out some other pieces. 40 seconds left. The push has to come sooner rather than later. It has to come indeed, and Katsang is debating whether or not he should be going up the red stairs or toss up that first. 
extra second grenade he has. He's not going to be finding anybody, but that is also information in itself. You know that those angles are currently clear. If there was someone, they would have been injured or killed. And Azrin now wants to push up onto the 90 corridor. Here's some sounds behind him. Turns out that's his teammate, and PGH takes that gunfight, but loses it out for the majority of it. 20 HP and 14 seconds left. They're going for the plant. They're going to see if they can stick it. Just behind the vault, door 11. He wants to swing around, gets the cover on strategy table. Coated should be able to get this stuck in, but he doesn't he's quite out. have enough bullets. He's out of it. And he's out of the room. And there it's cover Rin on the back line. Gets a quick double and an extra five bullets in the mag. That might have been a different story if he could have got the cement on the post plant kill there. But Damon Kia just are able to find that little bit extra, get that stick down. I was going to say, it, it's getting very close there. That, that the, the gun of Thorn, of course, just, just pushing through, getting one, getting two, and then running out as the rotation outwards happens is a very sad sight. Uh, otherwise, it would have been that 1v1. Could have dug in deep behind that door and gone for a potential defuse, which forced Rin to push forward. However, not the case in the end there. And it is that first round for Damon Kia. A solid one. Started off strong with a opening kill. They uh, won the first initial gunfights as well, and then they just decided to dig in deep and go for the plant right behind that fault door, which is a very safe position, of course. Um, you often see smoke canisters used to try and counter that, or C4s, but both had been used up. Like we had the PGH C4 to start the win from the start of the round, and then we had the smoke canisters used on those main stairs, of course. So there was nothing really left they could use to stop that plan from happening. There was also no verticality from below where you can use to try and maybe shoot them from there. As PGH is opening up that window, Yas has definitely heard that. Here's the C4 rip as well, and as the drone gets shot, PJ. H is forced to put it back in pocket. Still trying it, though. Yeah. He, he's still going for it. He hasn't quite been able to find the cement there. There was a sixth pick, I say. I'm going to keep saying that until I get used to saying attacker re-pick, which is obviously the new way that this all comes together. Cat Sang went onto the Thatcher off of a sledge. I'm curious to see where they want to see if they can try and get these EMPs dropped. Obviously, there's not too much in terms of trying to get through that hard wall. There's nothing that's going to instantly stop it off, and they have all the breach that they could want. It becomes a bit of a power position and play for a lot of teams. They sort of set themselves up with that push across the furthest wall over. They get into bedroom, and then from that point onwards, they might be able to slip themselves behind the chassis towards the default plant spot. But, again, there was nothing that really stopped that before. They have other ideas for these charges. Yes, yeah, so and quickly hopping over towards the balcony here. Tossing in that EMP so Koda can do his job with those Selmas. At least that's what I assume will happen. Yes, ready onto the rooftop as well. Potentially will be trying to repel down to put up a little bit more of pressure. There comes the first Selma. We'll start detonating, waiting to see if it will be cancelled. Yes, indeed it was. It was an impact nade from the top. That should won't stop that. And that's it. That's the sort of play I was talking about where there's nothing directly behind it. They're obviously not running any electronics. They've not got the mute or anything either. And it's smart. Just the sort of play there, whether it's a bait of pace, there's another catch with the impact and another bit of a damage here. And that's two Selmas through with nothing else to bounce back. And you know who might have been able to stop this? A grenade over the top from somebody like Sledge, somebody in a position to catch out their player. Sure, those were my discs. So you start burning some pressure and that player has nowhere else to go. They have to move off here. They've been able to get themselves a crawl opening. They just popped open a bit of preciousness. It also works as a sight line, but this is the problem. DK, they're having to go for a full rotate. They've got a plan B on the board, and they're a great team at a plan B and a plan C and making it hit the mark when they need it to. Mm -hmm. And you can see Rin, they've set themselves up there just on that little split window. The hop in, ready to try and put the pressure on the opposite side. The drones are already coming through, so they know the majority of AVG should be clear, and it's exactly being checked out by Katzing now, just quickly scanning over to see if it's actually clear. Um, but the doors already have been opened up. It's Arakazu with the first kill, however. Coated will drop, and now it is going to be a three-point push with 35 seconds on the board. Yes, with a very important grenade here. He needs to land this one, gets the disc. There comes the nade. That might not actually land the right way, and Arakazu is going to be able to survive here. Gets another kill, gets a triple kill for it, and actually has another spot as well before Rin shuts him down. It's a two and four situation. Make that just Woogie Man as he is going to try and fight them off with 15 seconds left. It is not looking good for him here. Smoke canisters are popping off as well. There is little to nothing he can do here. He might be able to pet some of his stats here, but the time seems to be running out and that will be T1 winning their first defensive round as well. 
it was a bit of a lock in there. They knew how they wanted to hold it off. The two impacts to play against the opening approach from Damon Kier, and it just didn't look great. And I think that's the sort of problem there. That's this moment that we talk about on a Damon Kier game against a team like T1 is why do they keep losing against yeah. a team where on paper, Damon Kier should be able to take this game on paper. It's and same sort of region conflict. It's teams that know each other well. It's teams that play on the local scene as well as the international scene. T1 haven't always had the best showing. They keep surviving, but it's by a scraping by sort of mm -hmm. difference rather than the top of the board dominance that we've seen Damon Kia flirt with. Yet here they seem more nervous than their international games. Here they seem more nervous than they did a month and a bit ago in SI in some of the showdowns Damon Kia had most notably their flawless run throughout groups. And it just becomes this these question marks that pop up of, you always get curious of why the mentality has shifted on a game like this. I don't want to say it's like rock, paper, scissors, uh, the game like Siege, but you know, so, some play styles are just perfectly countered by others. And it could be that T1, the way that they play the game is just something that doesn't really fit well within the wheelhouse of Damon Kia, something they just do not enjoy playing up against. And that is why T1 seems to be able to find some more success against the top team out of APAC and APAC North. Not a C4 being attempted here by PGH. Do it. And there's no one there, so he's just, he's just checking a cam, but he's also realizing that, oh, Ren is coming. Da -da. There it is. Da -da. In point now. Da -da 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 In reach. Watch the window. Watch the window. Da -da 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 That's too far. Didn't get it. Missed it just a little bit there, but PGH, I mean, he's going to keep trying it. He's waiting to see if he can put some pressure on it. Then now on the 90 window as well. There's two bodies stacked underneath. There's a drone, there's a reveal, and there's a man getting out of there whilst he still can. Woohoo! Slipped on by, and, well, the pings are a little bit too late. And whether they got the call at the time they did or whether they had an idea a little bit earlier, as soon as the drone was dropped, they're now in and underneath, and they can start trying to put some pressure on that verticality. It's like a bit of a venomous snake, PGH, you're trying to catch. If, if you overstep there, he'll bite you, and he, he gets that kill, but... He is someone that they want to deal with early on. Maffi with the first. Rin taken out from below. And as they do start to try and hopefully open up the vault now, it's going to be a uh, little bit less of a play area they can go for on the side of T1. But they have the man advantage and they'll happily take that here. As with 90 seconds left, DK need to quickly rethink what they want to do. It seems like they might want to put up some pressure onto these main stairs. Katsang is using that 417 DMR. Only will be spotting the head there, however. This is the opportunity to take a clean off, and now they know that the push is coming through. Smoke canisters are being used to stall some time. Up to 45 seconds can be wasted with that, and that would only leave us up with about 25 now. So DK again needing to change their plans. If suffered a blow a lot earlier than they did before, and I'm hoping that extra 30 seconds might be something that drives DK a little bit quicker here. Katsang's still holding off on this swing. He does have a bit of support. They have the E1Ds, and they have another smoke canister to contend with. Nowhere they can go. And with that player just playing loose on the bottom of the opposite staircase, they're still sort of trapped here. Two players on the top. They want to go for something quick and aggressive here. There's the gun six on the barb, and there's a shotgun that says, hello, how you doing? Pushes them back off instantly. The kit is now lost. 30 seconds. And Damwon Kia once again are finding themselves absolutely floundering on this approach. They just seem to not have a handle on where T1 are or what they want to do. And they're trying these little pushes and these little picks, but they just don't seem to have fully woken up to it. No, definitely not yet. 10 seconds left on the clock. There's nothing really they can do here. Yas is hoping to find the head, but they're not giving anything to the side of Damon Kia here. It's not really going to be a flawless round. It still will still be alive on the side of DK, but the time will run out, and Woogie Men will be able to find a single kill. It's T1 that's now in the lead here. And I something how they started off their first game of APAC North as well. They were leading, they were strong in those first four rounds, and that is something we're seeing for now as well. But after that, it started to slip away. So, you know, as soon as this round has been played, it is going to be the question, have they improved on that, on their consistency throughout this best of one? Or is it going to be Damon Kia that is going to be able to find themselves a way back in? And of course, Siege is a game of two halves. And... We're only halfway through the first one. We're a quarter in. We're a quarter in. Maybe. Maybe. It could be more. Maths it, is fun. It could be a fifth. <laughs> 
if we. Uh, <laughs> it could be so many different things. It could be so many different things. I just like to ruin your analogy. Either way, uh, <laughs> if Damon Kia ends with a 2 4, for example, it's not completely out of the ordinary for a Villa. And that doesn't mean they're out of the game already, especially when we head over to that second half and Damon Kia heads over towards that defense. Because the attack is where T1 were a bit sloppy here and there where they managed to get the diffuser in but then completely lost it on the retake so i think that is going to be that big improvement point i want to see from them just just tying up these loose ends as soon as you do have everything going for you because that is something they struggled with before and showing off against them on kia that you can lock everything off it's once again once again, a swap from a Sledge to a Thatcher. Once again, we start to see potentially playing with the attacker repick and seeing if they can drive against the Kaid Claw that's buried in on that little pantry lock-in. They are just missing the feet that slink on by and find themselves a new semblance of safety. Rin, they were the first off the board previously, but they're the, really the first to sort of find some ground in the showdown on the side of DK. So they've got to see if they can try and keep their blood in their body a little bit longer to try and remove it from their opponents. There it is, the pantry push from the take and a bit of damage and explosion. The claw isn't able to get the full trick. It'll stop it, double popping. And that one will ensure a little bit more safety, but they still have EMPs in pocket. They still have work they can do, and there's still that wall on the opposite side to protect. This is going to be an angle into the kitchen they can use now to hopefully shut down some parts of the rotation. Of course, there's still China, there's still Memorial, where these players of T1 can freely rotate in and out of. But as the laundry wall will now be opened up, at least it seems like the impact grenades and the C4s are going to be coming over there. I'm not quite sure what happened if that was a second EMP that caught it off. Yes, it is. The second EMP actually did disable that nitro, which made it able to be opened up. And that gives DK a good opening now. You also saw the castle barricade open up with the Gon 6. They have many different angles they can push from now. Rin is also putting up some pressure from that basement, at least by opening up the barrel. It's not going to be much, but at least it's some sound that might distract them. It's good to see them actually utilizing utility well and putting a drive on. This feels like a little bit more of that awake play that we know DK can bring, and they're starting to get rid of some of the shock. They have everything to deal with what's in front of them. The castles are slowly being cut across by impacts and by a bit of range and by the Gun 6. The first fight might happen here against Arakaze. He's stuck in, still has... Brick and pocket and able to maybe try and give himself a little bit more intel on this approach. But from three different sides, you assume he's going to find himself then bastard by the ballast attack here sooner rather than later. Woogie Man, is he fully aware they don't know. that this player is tucked in the corner? The drone rolls on by and there it is. He doesn't see it because it's on his scope. Revealed and dropped. Woogie Man able to get an important pick up there. 40 seconds. Focus needs to be paid now downstairs. Yeah, they now need to quickly head downstairs. They have some openings, but no one is really near them. So it might actually turn into a full memorial push. Actually, no. Yes, and Coated have rotated around. Rin as well near the mudroom to hopefully shut down some of the rotations. And as they start executing onto the site, a plan could be happening soon. Well, there's Coated. One more. Mephi is back up. Whether he had a Thunderbird in pocket or no, it's dropped down. Actually, it was 11 I was thinking of. Rin. Now leaves just Mephi left alive, finding one more against PJH. A flawless from Dan Wankia. The response to bring them back 2-2 apiece. And this is the team that you expect to see every single round, whether it's the one we'll start to see on the rounds coming forward, or if T1 can sort of try and match this pace, either way, DK waking up is a bit of a worry. It is going to be a worry for decided T1. This was a good round from them. Small adaptation coming in from the Thatcher to be broad, and of course a welcome one with the Electro class out there, especially in the positions where they were. It's hard to nade it. Um, definitely not nadeable from the breach itself because it was in a closet on the other side of the wall. Um, two walls, actually, because it had to go around the corner. And with that, um, good use of that. EMP, making sure you can open up with that Selma exactly what they did. And that allows them to open up ever so slightly. At least that small opening. It, it's a bit of pressure. That's it, right? Like, you, you do not need to use it as long as it's a worry in the defender's team. And after that, they open up laundry. Then they take full top floor control, and they were so effective with their time. Like, some people might be worrying if at a minute left, they suddenly start to take top floor after you already have the openings into the side, especially when it's just a single player. But the verticality really helped them out there. And as we have just two, uh, two uh, re-picks coming out, it's the Maverick and the Floors to be brought. 
were headed towards the exhibition one. The first one, T1, was able to win because though might uh, look, keep in mind, the kitchen we just played was a tertiary bomb site. It was the third site in a rotation that T1 wanted to win, and they failed to do so. Now they're headed back towards the two sites that they have been able to win before. This is why we need to see Damon Kia bring the same game as they did in the last round. PJH, he's still off, and he hasn't been able to find any success on this early roam game. Has the pocket salvation station, it's Thunderbird, so they can sort of give themselves a quick pick-me-up if they needed a deploy. It only takes a handful of seconds, and then a couple more, and then suddenly you've got yourself a bit spruced up. That roaming heel with a spear, with a C4, with the capabilities of what Villa offers can be deadly but it just hasn't this time around. PJH hasn't really been able to find their teeth into this, and whether it's DK's part of their game that they're well aware of, otherwise, this is where we've got to see them stretch out to the bits that they've stumped them. Can they utilize their good approach on the previous round? The way they burnt the utility there was the best it's been, but to be fair, before then, it's kind of been absolutely lost, and here, more than anywhere else, as they go for a quick, sneakier approach right up against it, Maverick. He's going to get this opened up, and you can't impact Trick a Maverick that well. Well, you can. <laughs> it takes, it takes it's, a couple of... It's, it's going to take a couple impact nades to get the kill, but, um, yeah, it, it, it will open up. That's it, right? Like, you cannot keep the wall closed with those impact nades. There is going to be that small opening now. They just wanted a line of sight, it seems like. And Jazz is currently holding that one off. It also allows you to, of course, stop any impact trickers for as soon as the uh, hard breach would be to come through, if there was any. Maffy, however, gets the very first. The diffuser dropped as well inside the bathroom. And as they're trying to get more RC returners in to get rid of that shield, it's Woogieman that is now trying to follow up. He's afraid of someone being up onto the Astro stairs as well, with Maffy being a bit of a distraction force. Drone coming out. We'll be checking that. We'll give out the information that it's indeed not. And I was going to say, Matthew, you're going to have to run there, really, because the RC Retero is about to blow up. Well, there's also somebody now trying to sneak their way up onto the window. Matthew's doing everything to hold onto the territory, and he's doing it quite well, but that chair isn't very bulletproof. And Yas is able to make sure that LMG does what it's been doing so devilishly on the recent meta here. Now, with that bit of control in 30 seconds, Rin goes for the rotate onto the opposite side. You can see Arakaze, 11, and PJH, because of that angle early up, opened onto the bedroom wall, means that they cannot be solidly inside the site. They've got to play it a bit at arm's length. There is a rotation coming from underneath from T1, whether it's going up to the Astro stairs. Either way, they've moved themselves into the site itself. Yes, with a double, and now with an attempt on a plant, it's PGH, but once again, a C4 goes wanting a four versus two. 11 on the close swing, has an idea of a player, but they have a better one. It's sprayed over from the window. The cover entirely comes through. There's at least one on the way out the door, but it's locked in. DK once again find themselves themselves one step ahead. And they have a DK starting to wake up here. They're able to isolate these players. They bring the adaptations to what has been haunting them in previous rounds. And T1 is starting to slip out a little bit here. Started off strong in those first three rounds ever since DK in the absolute driver's seat. And headed towards the Aviator end games now. We're not seeing that rerun. They're hoping to go towards that first bomb site they played, but unfortunately lost. One on the second attempt, however, in round three. And now leave Damon Kia guessing whether or not it will be exhibition or if it will be aviator games. However, the big thing about it is, though, as they have already spotted it out due to Mephi taking out one of those drones, you have a Tekaripe. So even if your lineup wouldn't have been absolutely optimized for the site you're going to, you can repick all five attacking operators if you want to, two different ones, and really, well, tailor a certain uh, attack that you want to go for in that specific round. So that that is the big change of it. Uh, we did see the, uh, the the 300 IQ repick from Ace to Ace on yep. Coated. Um, glad that's still there. You know, we had it with six pick. Uh, will not change with repick. <laughs> and now we're headed it's, into the I mean, six. who knows? Yeah. Who knows? It's a mental refresh. Maybe it is. You need it sometimes. All right, T1, can you pull yourself even here before Damon Kier find themselves over onto their defense? You're still running the Thorn. I think the growth that we've seen here from DK has been that attention towards utility. The way that they've grown and actually started playing the pressure onto the site itself has been absolutely night and day from how it started and the rounds that slipped away from them. And that pace, 
That's warming up to them. Woogie on the far approach all the way in bedroom. Rin is sort of toying with the idea of offering some support onto 90, but then rotating their way back towards the statuary side instead. Uh, sort of going for a bit of a slower clear here. They know that T1 can play this loose. They probably have an idea that there is that loose player just hitting at the bottom of red and sort of waiting for the rotation possibility. It's 11. He can be dangerous on his day. And while well, it wasn't the other day in here, it's a little bit closer to it, but... It just takes one round to really start to pop off. All right, DK heading for a full bedroom take, it seems. First one in, drones have already been through, so they probably know that statue is clear. Yeah, you see it heading right ahead of them now into the landing. Spotting one to descend those red stairs, and that allows Katsang to come up even closer. The crouch coming through, that's the Jaeger caught off as he places the ADS, and it's a free kill here for Katsang. There is one on 90, I believe he might have just fallen back as well, but at least it is a free opening here that they can use now and very early on as well. 11, he is that sort of swing player now. He has to strike at the right moment. PJH cannot overextend on that shield that he has, although he likes to play that dangerous game. Now, as long as he's there, they don't get a clean entrance, but also, as long as he's there, that allows Eleven a bit of time to play around because as soon as he's dropped, Eleven is in a much trickier situation. The C4 doesn't net anything. Once again, PJH is left wanting somebody at the end of that trick he loves to play. And now they're going to see if they can try and pull him out of his own petard. The grenade starts to try and bounce and batter their way around onto the player, but he can retreat into Vault Eleven. He might not know about that player on Art. That could be the big risk that happens later. Katsang. He's sort of curious. He has an idea that he's not entirely comfortable but with the diffuser where it is in 40 seconds. They've got to start striking, and there it is. The art player comes through. Yas gets that one, forces all the players back up top. It's now just the three left holding onto the site. Seems like they want to go for another foul push here. PGH with an amazing kill with the SMG. He goes for a second, but fails to land that one. It's only up to Arakazi now, and he's completely blinded when Yas swings around the corner here and grabs that very final kill. He had no clue, no chance of ever winning that fight. And that is DK now in the lead even more. So four to two as they lock it off. And again, T1 with a strong start of the game, unable to continue that through the second half of that first half, or the second quarter, as we want to call it. <laughs> and now Aviator Games will be brought by DK. They're on the defense now. And PGH, you know, we, we highlighted him a bit before, so did... So did Ace about the use of his C4s, but I'm not sure if you noticed, but Rin took so many precautions. Like walking, oh, they were aware. walking the long way around every single time. It costs you some time, but at least it provides you with safety and making sure that you're not picked up by that C4. Well, this is the comparison that I sort of had at the beginning of the day. It was, it didn't seem like they were aware of what T1 wanted to play. Those first three rounds, they mm. just, even with the repicks, weren't, battling against T1's game, and you could see it in how it was reflected. Rin was the only person who was cautious since the beginning, and Rin was the person that was only on positive. Now they've picked up the game at Woogie Man, five to zero. He hasn't died. <laughs> hasn't died, but he had barely gotten a kill in the opening two rounds, three rounds. It's Most of that's come from the most recent. Yas as well, seven to two. These players that I sort of said, we want to see them start to pop in and bring that level. This is them warming up. This is them getting into the game, and... On the side of T1, there hasn't really been that response, but now's an opportunity to try and drive some of that here, and it starts with an, an AVG. Now, there is only a single player on the side here for the side of Damon Kia, so if they want to go quick, which is always the potential that there is with a line and a Fink on the board, it's flashbangs already coming through here, and it's going to be magnets that get wasted. There's a bit of a fear. However, that's a C4 that popped out. Mephi low on HP. Will be able to heal himself back up. But now they're forced to go for a bit of a change. It feels like they, you know, they realized, okay, they know that we were stacked up on these windows here. It could be that they are aware of our plan to go quickly. And now they have to rotate around. They know someone is as well near that master bedroom. The window was opened up. And thus they decide to put their attention this way now. I'm curious to see if the flashes were just a bait to try and pull more players over towards the site itself and really isolate the ones that could be left here holding on, just taking 
one out, but there's Yas. He's back. He is responding to what the approach is putting down on them. He is making sure that wherever T1 are, Yas is there to offer a bit of an extension. And, well, not for very long. Mephi swings onto the corner, gets the second to 11's first. And now it is just this single player left on that slip by. They want to lean into the first fight, and they cannot take it. It's a double for Mephi. PJH underneath. Now they can start their ingress towards the site. A minute 30 left and only two DK players. Two DK players indeed. A very good rotation call from T1 coming through and some well-executed wall take onto the bedroom side. Just winning these gunfights head on under, of course, the cover of the E1D and the Adrenaline Surge, giving you a little bit of a boost here and there. Wiggyman on the red stairs, however, is in a good position to at least sow some chaos if they do not completely drone this out. He might be able to pick up one, maybe even two, but a drone comes around the corner. They're well aware of it now. It's actually two as he tries to escape with his life. There is BGH on the hunt, spots him out, but doesn't quite get the kill yet. Coda gets the first as Wiggyman goes down. It's only him in a 1v4 now. He needs to ace clutch if he wants to land this round into the hands of Damwon Kia, but he seems to be aware of the fact that it was a rotation headed towards the main stairs. I'm not quite sure if that's still the case. A player on the main stairs as well spots him out and deals a lot of damage. Smoking has to left the shotgun as well, and the E1D that pops is not looking very bright for him here as Arikaze goes down for that plant. 45 seconds will not even reach the clock. PGH gets that final kill, and that is T1 fighting back on their attack. A great opening there for T1, and as I said, they had a response or sort of an idea of where they wanted to pull DK's defense, and DK did the best they did. Damon Kia, they sort of picked themselves up, they went back over towards the AVG, uh, from AVG towards the statuary side and vice versa when the push was going either way. And there it was just T1 had that bit of extra pressure. They got that opening engagement. And then from then on, they had a massive man advantage on the opposite side of the map. They were all there. There wasn't a single loose player. It was a five point attack on a single position. It was all of the players. And although from Damon Kia's approaches, we saw a bit of a spread all the way across Villa. Villa is a hefty map with some big angles to hold here. And T1 made sure that they wanted to just take fights and win them. Also, after seven rounds, Woogie Man has finally died. Finally died. Finally died. The first loss on the uh, defense uh, was the reason why. And now we're seeing a swap again coming out. We see the Nomad being changed out for a Dokubi. Could indicate an even quicker playstyle to come in from T1. And, you know, the thing is, we do see a lot of line in APAC North, uh, in APAC South as well. It, it is an operator that really does help when you want to explode onto the site because there is just a limited amount of things that the defenders can do. If they move under the E1D, there is going to be that ping. There's going to be free information out for the attackers which with uh, superior guns, you can say. Well, ooh, that is crazy boy. Just spotting someone run by there, but not being able to catch him off. Yeah, he's trying to hammer home a very hefty gun, but there isn't quite a full connection there. Rin doesn't quite have the same, opting for the SMG in their pockets instead. They're gonna see how long they might be able to hold on to this play space, but there's otherwise just, again, no one wide. No one else is pulling themselves away from T1's approach here. Once again, they've sort of stacked themselves up quite heavily on a singular objective, a singular idea. There's PJH now that's gone off for a bit of a rotation. They're potentially going to try and find themselves in underneath. They are now that loose thread. But again, they're probably going to pull up the bottom of Red Stairs to just get a little bit more of a side angle here, sort of wrap around anyone on this corridor itself. They are actually underneath the hatch now. PJH, they might be seeing if they can try and catch somebody on a rotate on the opposite side. It's not the most common place to go, but stuck in and buried out. The grenade starts That's to roll through. That's still red. Uh, they just hoped they'd be able to stick it out. Hope that it would roll the right way, but that wasn't the case. And Rin loses their life in a very unfortunate way. Should have stepped a little bit to the left or the right, and you should have been fine there right away. It's the first one for T1. And as uh, they now have living room control, Crazy Boy wants to hack that phone, make sure that they have camera control. It's, of course, a ability that is also in the hands of that Dokubi. It's still a Logi Bomb left. And that will be very helpful in the very final take. In a very final few seconds when they explode into the side, they already have to fight a singular man less. There's Woogie Man up on top with that Oryx. Well, you jump up very often with that. Um, as he's being droned out. Has he been droned out? Maybe Doesn't not. seem to be the case here. PGH might have not checked around the corner, so Boogeyman 
able to set himself back in, but he's kind of worrying about it. He doesn't quite know. And there it is. That's the kill. That's going to be the equalizer here. PGH did not know, and that's the IQ gone. Had no idea. Yes, is able to find 11 as well and gets rid of that player buried underneath. It's a big bout of a rotate and a big bit of territory to lose. But here's Mephi knocking on the door of the site. they got to move before that rotation comes from underneath. The C4 onto the cam where they expected a bit of a quicker push. Mephi doesn't care. Drives himself into the site, gets a double, oh. goes for an Oryx who looks to flirt with danger. The grenade is going to keep them at bay, but there's the pop in from China. There's the swing round onto the Plana and there yes. is a fourth for Yang. Yes! Again, yes, back on the board here. And this is something we've seen him do so many times, the right moment to go for that flank, just swing in. When it's starting to slip away for the side of Damon Kia, who saves the round, and Damon Kia, five on three, only two more needed to pick up the win here. One more to find a singular point, and with that, make sure that they stay above T1 in the standings. And two more to get a full three and potentially end up at the top of the leaderboards at the end of the day. And there is only seven play days. So, I mean, we said it uh, last play day on Wednesday. There we go. I said it right this time. Yeah. Um, You're learning. It only took like an hour. At the end of next week, we might already have a team confirmed for playoffs. Wow. Because it's it's four play days gone of the seven that are being played. And then if they just have a big head start over all the others... There wasn't a single OT on Wednesday as well. No. Every single game was a full three-point game, which means that, in the immortal words, some of those games might end up being six-point games, where it's not just winning the three, but also taking the three out of your opponents, because yeah. we don't know who is going to be racing for what positions come the end of this split. We don't know who is really going to be fighting for it, because there was a couple of, all right, games that went the way you expected on Wednesday, but there's always a couple of upsets, and that is a region that is just, as we said, growing from strength to strength, with the only real new addition this time around, Reject. Amari on the board might be uh, proving to be some quite a big aggression to come in from PGH. Could either be going through a hatch or into 90, as that is currently being checked out. And look at that, no one on the side. PGH has a free reign as he's about to swing in. He's still checking. He needs to be sure that he's completely safe. The rest of his team also needs to be able to respond. And as he just Gara hooks in, he's going to be taking the side as they do take the main stairs. The rotate back is starting to flood in, but there's only three members left on the side of DK against the four in the site. Should be in control of T1. I love how he hopped out. He sort of said, I'm here. And now they'll have the thought and the concern that he might still That's be. The diffuser. Katzang gets the diffuser cold and takes care of an air jab with his face. Now he's going to see if he can try and get some solid control back over the site as PGH. He's out of there. He's holding off on the pings, hoping they swung a bit wide, not expecting him to be on the window on the rappel. Rin, they're a bit curious, a bit concerned about this player. It means that they have just an extra element they have to try and work with, but the two remaining players have to try and get that diffuser relocated. They have the ping on the player just on the swing round. They know that a player's inside the vault. The grenade might force them into a more uncomfortable situation. Katsang, he suffers the scrapes, but he's able to just slip on by and back in. Now he's going to see if he can lean in with some support of Woogie Man. There's a player behind the billiards table that is down and not out yet, but Mephi being able to pick up one more. Do they have the charge to get that player back in? There it is. Sophia's back on the feet. Narakaze quickly removes them. Once again, oh. it's Rin and Katsang over the top. And that puts Damwon Kia on map point and one round away from another three. It was such a weird round though, like they took mainstays control, they had 90 control, and then they just didn't go for sight. They pulled back, they're like, okay boys, we got those first two kills, let's just hold now, let's just chill uh, and see if we if we can slow this down. But they, they should have pushed through, they had every single opportunity to head towards the site, through the classical hall, planned right behind the bar. But that might have been a bit of lack of uh, information on the side of T1. Like, they knew 90 was clear. They knew there was only a single person onto uh, those main stairs. But due to the mute jammers, they probably couldn't have entered the site. And they couldn't see whether or not it was completely clear or not. And they'll be looking back at the vault and probably be a bit upset about it as well. Because they realized they had everything they needed to get the plant out, to get the full site control. But because they slowed down as much as they did... Lost around as a result. Allow Demon Kia to get back into their rhythm and make sure that they clutch it. They bring it back around. And while well, you might pick up Yas, they're still and encoded, of course. There's still three incredible players left on Katsang, Woogie Man, and Rin, who all are showing up today as well.
And now a single round is all. Damon Kia is looking for in the next three to lock off those three points. He said it. That's also taking away three from T1 and having the head-to-head. -head. So even if T1 would be tying with Damon Kia at the end of this stage, Damon Kia would still be up above them due to a win here today. That's given the fact that they will be taking that win, of course. So, how long will they need? Maybe a bit longer than this round as Mephi gets the very first kill. I was going to say, not very long there. Yas gone, 11 to 5, and a bit of a storm of a player over the past couple rounds alone. How they built themselves into this game before, but we know Damon Kier is a team of clutch potential. T1 have to make sure that they can try and solidify because, to be fair, they got the early lead in and they got that big surprise strike on the previous round. It's keeping that control and making sure that you keep the pressure moving. You keep trying to develop yourself onto the site, onto your opponents as the round grows through. Crazy Boy is just cementing some control here with the Nomad. It's been a pretty consistent play, but we've seen our jabs buried right into the heart of the site before. C1D popping off here allows a push to happen now and AVGs to be taken here by T1. It's the first, I believe, that just popped and now they're headed over towards the landing side. They want to go for statuary and trophy, of course, but they need to figure out what these last remaining players are. There's three around the side. I believe one might be on the bottom floor. Release that first floor to hope and go for a potential uh, flank. They have a Katzing, indeed, a Memorial is looking to go for a flank later on. And if they do decide to fully execute onto the side, that means red would no longer be watched. You do have the extra man advantage. You need to make sure that those flanks are under control, T1. Otherwise, it might come back to you. All the drones are trying to wear their way around to get a catch here, potentially onto Coated. There is the players underneath, but if they can try and get a bit of a drive onto the site itself and suddenly try and swing around, the retake is not an easy one as the solo player trying to hit either of the two staircases. Coated with the shotgun here, clocked and locked and ready to go. He's hoping for a bit of a swing around on the close corners. There's an air jab, but it's not going to get the full catch. There's an SMG that sprays through. Doesn't get the full drop, though. And they're going to pull themselves into a slightly different position. The impact underneath won't quite get the full finish, but here is maybe a bit of a sneaky play. If they're going to try and force themselves through onto the door itself, Rin is trying to match them. There's the spray onto the first, finds a connection and finds a hop off. There is a bit of an escape, and suddenly the body balance is still battling back and forth, but Woogie Man cements two more. It's a two versus two. Arakaze inside the site with the kit and a two versus one. Now it is just the two staircases on a retake. Goes for a bit of a sneaky plant there on the heel. The trick in the trap on the corner. Heard a bit of an audio, but it's nobody that's in a position to hurt them. Now, though, that's bought them the few extra seconds to get themselves ready to swing onto the door. This time they stick it, but they're not going to be alone for very long. Finds the first and a great pop off and pop up. Now they pull themselves back. Take care of the Banshee and it puts them in a bit of a tricky situation. Rin, do they tuck themselves in on the corner? There it is, it's buried as close as they can go. Hits the two, they don't stick it though. And that might have been the win if they decided and opted for it, they're concerned. And they have no idea where the player is at this point though. They're gonna see if they can cement it for the second time round. There it is, the Grismot that'll just knock them off. Perfectly played. There, they don't have any more, so instead it's going to be the pre-fire of the LMG, and Arakaze clutches it in. Ren had the opportunity to stick it there. He didn't seem to be aware that the stick was coming through. However, Ren, of course, as well, he doesn't know when the push is coming in. They didn't have any more information uh, than just the audio cues that were with him. And that one Kia now 6-4. to four. T1 bringing back. It was an early entry into Yas, who I believe got sprayed down as they opened up the doors. Just, you know, everything aligns in those cases. And T1 find the extra round. They need to find two more to push this 2 OT. The first one in APAC North. And with that, secure themselves a point. Let's see if they can. Reinforcements coming in. The prep phase has started. DK is deciding to go to that bottom floor. It's a site where the attack at T1 seemed to be going quite well up until the point where Yas swung around the corner and got a 4K. Uh, that that is basically what we can we can, what we can tell you. Yas just insane that round. And if he doesn't get picked up early, that is a worry. If you find him early on, you know that there's certainly a lot of stress off your shoulders to some extent because he, he is just an incredible player that keeps on delivering every single time. 
Okay, DK, one round still separates you from the full fat three points. T1, two separate you from being able to pull anything from this game. And it's been little rounds here and there throughout this showdown. You're able to tie two together very early on, but you've got to see if you can replicate that and then do one better if you want any hope of something from this game. Yes, he is that loose player, as he said. He's a big power player connection and this time he isn't caught anywhere near as early and that wherever he was caught from it was a very quick strike t1 not quite as pacey on the approach this time around they want to see if they can try and build with a bit more control here the pings are coming through for yas and he might see if he can catch somebody up on the balcony but otherwise no guests there's some goo mines out there as well so he knows if he's getting pushed from the balcony itself and He's holding a very tight angle. It's actually drones pinging him out. And more drones are coming in as well as he tries to rotate out. Some floor bangs are attempted by Mephi and the LMG. However, nothing will stick for now. Heals himself back up to full HP as well with the second adrenaline surge. As long rotations are being made now into that red hallway here. Surikazi that digs himself in deep here in a very tight corner, hoping to find some success. Yes, on those red stairs. He's giving away his position by tossing out one of those goo mines there. Surely that should have been seen or heard, at least by Arikazi. ST1 is slowly starting to take the rest of that first floor by now. Mephi in the mid living room and PGH from below. There could be just a horizontal push to come through in the next couple of seconds. Yes, he's still kind of curious about picking a fight. He's holding off and waiting for the approach to come across this big lobby space, but it, it is such a no man's land. It's a huge divide. And you can see Mephi is going for the creep over towards Mudrum. They've been able to get themselves close up here for the approach on the bottom of the Astro stairs. And well, they've got to pull back because there's still a lot of utility. There's still gates to burn through. They can't just blitz their way onto the site as they've often done before with that huge bout and explosion of pace. So instead they pull themselves back. Katsang with the heart rate monitor is getting the read on this couple of players, they know now that the pressure's gonna come from this side and they still don't have anything. The longest we've probably seen around without T1 trying to find a fight. A little bit of damage done into Kat saying there. I'm not quite sure if that was a Twitch drone or anything else. Either way, there is quite some information here. Memorial seems to be clear. They look like they might want to enter from that position. However, yes, with an angle from above, is going to be able to shut them down if they step out a little bit too far out of that comfort zone. And of course, we have the Oryx around as well. That's going to be a free spot and a free kill. Crazy gets the first, but that's it. Yes, from above finds one and the diffuser as well. Coda finds yet one more. There it is. That is two bodies gone. 15 seconds. 11 battles his way back in. Prefires onto his own player. And that's a bit of a blow. But there is another one. Two versus two. They're going to see if they can get the slip down on the plant. It's a one versus one. But only five seconds left. Arakaze has to stick. There is no way he's going to get the connection here. It's just oh, a little rotation. bit late. Caught on the rotate. And round and round we go. Just to see if they can keep themselves in. Woogie Man sees the side of his defender. Somehow pulls it out with the, the pistol. Pops off against the LMG. And it doesn't matter how many bullets you've got if you've got a secondary that's as sharp as that pistol can be. Damwon Kia take three points. Take their second in a row. And T1 unfortunately take another loss. The bailiff coming in in the end there. I, I was like, oh, we swapping over to the pistol. But as you said, it works out quite well. You just go for a point blank range. That will even kill a man. And as that final kill came through, DK. Able to take the full three points here. 11 kills on Rin, 12 on Yaz, 10 on Vu.